Yeah, it's fun to drive. Okay. Wow. I mean, the way it tracks, it doesn't, it doesn't have roll. Whoa. Whoa. Welcome to the Back to Life series at Be Tough. Join us as we go behind the scenes and check out some of the best hot rod fabrication in Bakersfield at H&S Body Works. Hey everybody, this is Billy with our Back to Life series. I'm here with Tom Riggins, and man, I have something unbelievable to show you. This is a, tell us what year it is. It's a 1955 two-door station wagon, referred to as a handyman. Handyman. Like the license plate says. Right, there's a lot of history to this, right? There is. Yeah, so tell us about it a little bit, man. This is unbelievable. Well, I saw it on eBay originally, and we had a 55 sedan, and I sold it to a guy, and I told my wife I wanted to do a wagon, so a friend of mine and I, is a, it was born in California, but it spent a few years in Iowa. And of course they solved the roads there and ugh, it didn't look that bad on eBay, but he didn't sell it on eBay. I had him strip it. I went with a buddy of mine, we picked it up. Had a lot of issues, I had to put floors in it and rocker panels and just fix a bunch of rust. But the body style is very hard to come by. So. It was a five-year project, and here it is, and we drive it a lot. It's got about 12, actually, it's got about 17,000 miles on it. Okay. How did Chevrolet come up with the term handyman? I have no idea. I think the four-door wagon was a tradesman, kind of like the old Fuller Brush Man. He used to go door-to-door -door and sell housewives okay. cleaning products and brooms and stuff. Easier to get in and out of a four-door. This is just a traditional two-door wagon. The fancy version of the two-door wagon in this year was a Nomad, but I didn't want a Nomad. Specifically, I just kind of yeah. the old keep it simple, stupid thing. But the license plates, people have got a lot of compliments off of that. So I gotta assume, I'm just gonna assume here, and if anybody's out there, they can correct me that, of course, this doesn't have four doors, right? Which is kind of unique for a station wagon because usually a station wagon is something that you would have the family for in, family, right? Yes. So this was something that the ladders in the back, this is a guy that would do jobs, right? right. He'd throw the ladders and the tools in the back. You only need a door for him to get in and out. Right. And therefore they may call it the handyman. Right. Am right. I far Before off on that? The pickups were so, so popular like they are nowadays. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I want to take a look at some of these body lines, man, because this is absolutely beautiful. What color is this? It's a special mix. It's close to the original turquoise, but not. it's not the original turquoise because I parked next to a, an original turquoise car, yeah. the Tri-5 era, which is all about the same. And it was quite a bit different. The cream color in the center matches the gauge faces. That's actually a Martha Stewart color from Home Depot. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> now did this, did you add this trim on here? No. Yeah, well actually, yes. Okay. This is from a Bel Air like a sedan or a hard top Bel Air. This is Bel Air trim, because the original trim that went down the quarter panel here was just solid like this, solid stainless. This has this cutout piece, so it's painted here to match this, mm -hmm. to kind of break up the big quarter panel. Right, it's got that kind of jet, you know, yeah, rocket yeah, yeah, stuff like that was going bird, on, and, you know. Birds and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, now did that, did you add that? Was that, this is your, is this your creation or was this from no, the factory? No, no, that's all 55. That's a 55 hood bird. This it is, oh, okay. 56s were Denver and in the 57s had a bullet looking deal on each side of the hood. Yeah, that's a, this has to be one of the best looking hood, oh, I love them. hood ornaments I've ever seen, you know? I would never uh, do one of these cars and take that off. A lot of guys smooth the hood. Oh man, not I that one. I don't understand it. Yeah, it's a, stock grill. Yeah, pretty much, except for that emblem in there. It's uh, That's COVID boredom. I just did that a few months ago. It's off of a 62 Chevy SS Impala trunk lid. Wow, yeah. Just wanted to break the grill up a little bit and be different, because sometimes it's cool to be different, sometimes it's not. Right, but now you have something really, you have an LS motor right underneath the hood? It's got an LS3, which is called the hot cam motor. This is like from the 07, 06 to 08 era. It, uh, it's not a street legal motor because of the cam that's in it. Funny thing is the paperwork that came with the car said that during low RPM and it's going rather slow, it, the car may surge, 
but it will clear up with wide open throttle, which I just started, my, I started laughing when I read it. My wife was he laughing about it. It's just funny that they would put that in there that'll clear up with wide open throttle. <laughs> yeah. But I've had it dyno since then. It came at 480 horse. It's now 560. Can we take a look at it? Yeah, sure. All right. And it's got a, it's got a, uh, it's got what's called a Tremec six speed, which is the same gear or transmission rather that they put in a Viper. Here it is. Okay, there it is. Oh wow, that's nice. Oh yeah, really good. So it's got a six speed manual transmission and fifth and six are overdrive. So at a hundred miles an hour, it's running six, 3,200 RPM. Right. Now, so it's, it's a great cruiser. Now looking at the upper A arms, of course, you got a tubular race car it's style. All, it's all Corvette. The whole chassis is, was built by a guy named in Paso Robles, Templeton area, Pass, uh, his name is Paul Newman. Years ago, he was an Indy car fabricator, and he did these chassis for tri fives. And Corvette? It was a Corvette ch chassis. And it's all C4. It's all uh, up to, I think, 94, whenever they started making it, in, in the C4s. But anyway, yeah. So the C4 Corvettes were roughly within just a couple of hundred pounds of these cars. Uh -huh. So the suspension was adequate for the car. And it, it's power rack and pinion. It's got Corvette upper and lower A-arms, uh, sway bars, front and rear, power rack and pinion steering, Bilstein shocks. This car's got a carbon fiber drive shaft. It's really fun to drive. Yeah, unbelievable. And it, it gets about 18 and a half miles a gallon. And like I said, it's, it was running really rich in the computer, which is right in front of the fender back here. I don't know if you can see it. That's oh, yeah. a computer that GM said to use with this engine, and it was running really rich, and so I took it to a guy on a chassis dyno down south, and uh, he just tuned it. It was, he said, he just leaned it out a lot, what it was. And it's still safe, but it's, it went from 480 horse to 560. Whoa, that woke it up. It did wake it up. Yeah. Well, you know what? I got to go for a ride. A lot of people say, okay. Billy, you do these cool cars, but you don't ever go for rides, and we yeah. never hear it fire up. So I want to hear you fire it up. And then we'll go for a ride. What do you think about that? We can do it. All right, let's do it, man. That's great. That's got to be one of the coolest station wagons I've ever heard. But I gotta say, this thing is comfortable. This is an Whoa. aftermarket seat. It's called a Glide, and uh, it was—it's called a bucket bag bench. But I took three springs out of the front. The springs run front to rear. Okay. And I made a little console box down yeah. there. Yeah. Storage. Right. I mean, this thing sounds like a race car, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is not what I expected a station wagon to sound like. Well, you know, a hot rod, you're supposed to be loud, I guess. Yeah. Now, how, this is, a, you know, the thing is, when people think about putting money into a hot rod and you put some money into this, I don't think you'll hide that <laughs> truth, right? Yeah, people right. don't think of, you don't really think about people putting a lot of money into a station wagon, right? Right. So, like, what did your hot rod buddies think when you did that? They all liked it. I got a bunch of friends that have uh, wagons, nomads, 55, 6, and 7, all three years. And yeah, there's a, uh, there's a lot of sites on Facebook groups that are into this Tri-5 Chevrolet thing, and, and uh, guys have questions if they're building one, guys looking for parts if they need one, and somebody's always got an answer or a part that you may need. Yeah. Have you ever seen one this nice before? I don't think I've ever seen a station wagon well, this clean. No, it's... I mean, that thing is awesome. Yeah, it's fun to drive. Okay. Wow. I mean the way it tracks. It doesn't. It doesn't have roll. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, jeez, dude. <laughs> That's just one gear. Wow. <laughs> my, my son's in the Air Force. We were kind of out in Seventh Standard area, and I just got on. He grabbed.
moved his phone and started taking a video and I had the speed on him or buried. He was still pulling really hard and I just let off of it. I went like that and he goes, what's that, Dad? And I says, we've got two more gears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, that, you know what, that is a, it's kind of like an optical illusion. As we went around the corner, it didn't have the body roll that you'd expect no. out of a station wagon or an old hot rod. Just like Corvette. Yeah, and then when you got on the gas, I'm like, whoa. You see that with a Corvette suspension, the front end raises up and yeah. stays there. And the back end squats and stays there. That's just the way the shocks are. So these are real sticky tires on here. You got to work pretty hard just to break the tires loose. If you know, if it didn't have the Corvette suspension, it would have lit the tires up right there. But it just shifts the weight. No, no loss in traction and yeah. no, no slip from left to right as far as like breaking loose a little no, bit. You know? Stable. Yeah. yeah. It's got. Uh, composite leaf springs. It's a single leaf made out of a composite material. When you have it out in your hand, it, it weighs about the same as a can of beer. What? It's holding this whole car up. And the way they raised and lowered them was on top of the spring, there's a, a shim that's about three by eight, say. It's a spacer, rather. And it goes between the spring and the chassis. So the more spacers, the higher the car. Well, I, I've taken them all out of this. So there's no spacers left. It's as low as I can get it. But, and it's an issue sometimes. I've scraped the exhaust because the wheelbase is long. Getting in and out of hotels or you've got to really watch speed bumps. But, you know, they just look cool when they're low. Yeah. <laughs> Suspension, front and rear is all aluminum. And back in those days, everything was cast iron. So it lost a lot of weight doing what I did to it. Well, the the chassis's been replaced, right? Too or yeah, no? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a Corvette chassis. Well, it's it's a, actually the the rails, the actual frame rails are still stock 55. I'll show you. I can show you beside the engine on each side where they all did it makes a whole front clip. You know about front clips. Yeah. They, they pocket weld and perimeter weld over the old frame and that accepts all the Corvette suspension, the power racket pinion, the uh, A-arms and all that stuff. And I mean the tire wear is perfect so you know the geometry is right. Right. You know I've ridden in some hot rods and I've ridden in ones that have coilovers and the idea, this thing feels like it has coilovers but it doesn't and that yeah. is like just blowing my mind right now. <laughs> I mean there's no like roll, there's no I mean, this thing is handling. It's got a shot going up through the center. And there ain't nothing around it. Right. Yeah. It's a Bilstein shock. It's one made for this era of Corvette. That's what Paul uses on them. And they're not adjustable. They're made. They got interior uh, bump stops and, uh, and what do you call it, uh, to limit the travel. But... So if you wanted to ride a little softer, you just have to, you'd have to go with a different shock, and I think you'd have issues if you tried to do that. It's different valving. Kind of like yeah, it's kind of like he told me. Just drive it, put some miles on it. They'll get a little better with age and miles, and it has. So I got. It. Plus, you get used to it a little bit, right? <laughs> about that planning that back in because yeah, you can feel it. It rolls there. back and it sticks. Yeah. When I do that sometimes with these kids with these rice rockets around town, they'll go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't expect it. Yeah, this is not this is not one station wagon. You know, you should underestimate. No, it's, I don't do that street racing stuff anymore like I did when I was a kid, but it's fun once in a while. You tap that throttle and Kind of haul ass if you want. Just gotta be careful, just like everything else. Oh, yeah. This has got a 410 gear in the rear. You know, you're familiar with that. Yeah. Well, fifth and six are overdrive. Six gear is 0.5, so it turns the 410 gear into a 205. Wow. So at 100 miles an hour, like I said, it's only going 3200 RPM. To get it out on the freeway at 80 miles an hour is really happy. What does it feel like? I mean, how many you got five years in this thing building? Yeah. Okay. What does it feel like 
the first time you get behind the wheel and you're driving it after five years. I was so nervous, dude. I just, I went out like on a Sunday morning when there's hardly any traffic and I was just nervous because I knew if something happened to it, I was gonna have to fix it. I mean, ultimately, if somebody ran into the fender, I'd have to take the fender off, take it to Shepard, have him fix it, and put the fender back on the car. They can do it there, but uh, it just, I'd have to do it. But a lot of people don't understand that. You know, if you you got a regular new car, Toyota, Lexus, whatever, somebody runs into you, you just take it to the dealer and drop it off, or body shop of your choice. It doesn't work that way with these cars. you got to do it yourself. So you just tend to be a lot more careful with it. I think that may be why the insurance for these cars is not near as expensive as it is for a new car. So like a new, I could have bought a damn Porsche for the money I got on this. You know, or a new uh, BMW or whatever. A lot more expensive to insure one of those cars, but they know that when I built this car, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be very ginger with it, you know? I might get on the throttle kind of hard once in a while, but I wouldn't do it right here with all these cars around me. You know? Yeah. Plus, I'm an old fart, so I get a deal on that thing. <laughs> these wagons had a spare tire holder underneath this floor back here. Uh -huh. But I couldn't use it because of the Corvette suspension. The independent in the back is so much taller and everything, so we had to cut the floor out and put a new floor in it. I got an undersized, one of those little baby spares for a Corvette, and that's what I've got in there. But yeah, very cool. What now, Billy? <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, man, that, <laughs> this is probably one of the funnest rides I've had. I mean, I've, I've gone in hot rods and I've done a lot, but this was actually a lot of fun, man. It's fun being in that thing. It is, good car, good dependable car. Yeah, just, uh, I can see why you're proud of it. I can see why h and Body Works is proud of it. This is like one of the, their nicer ones they put out. You don't see station wagons. You don't see a handyman very often and I'll tell you what this is one for the books and I want to thank you for taking us for a ride and tell us about it you're welcome I appreciate you doing this and uh, looking forward to seeing the video all right very good this is Tom and this is Billy with our H&S Body Works back to life series with B-Tough thank you